closing in on the Islamic State group's de facto capital in Iraq. The Kurdish Peshmerga, backed by Turkey and the U.S. military, are attempting to surround Mosul by taking control of nearby towns and by cutting off key supply routes. 10,000 fighters captured the strategically important city of Bashika, just nine kilometers outside of Mosul, after a dawn raid on Sunday. Elite federal forces are also fighting to secure Iraq's largest Christian town, Karakosh, after claiming control of Bartella. The Peshmerga are attempting to control the Islamic State group by creating an arced boundary 20 kilometers to the east of Mosul. Military analysts say that even if the city is retaken, it won't mean that the Islamic State group will have disappeared from the area. The city is surrounded by highlands, hills, mountains and caves. The natural environment provides places for the terrorists to hide. So in a lot of ways, a cleanup operation will be very complicated, but it's not impossible. In response to the offensive, the Islamic State group launched a series of diversionary attacks. Jihadists set fire to a sulfur factory outside of Mosul, sending plumes of noxious gases over the battlefield. They also launched a surprise assault on the Kurdish-controlled city of Kirkuk on Friday. Further south, Islamist fighters attacked Rutba, a remote town near the Jordanian border, using five suicide car bombs over the weekend. Some 7,000 Islamic State group fighters are thought to be defending Mosul. Human rights groups say they're concerned about the fate of some 1.2 million civilians still thought to be living in the city. Early in the morning, Pakistani security personnel were still on high alert outside the police training academy in Quetta. Gunfire was heard here throughout the night as masked gunmen wearing explosive vests stormed the facility. 700 trainees were on the base at the time. Security forces arrived at the training center within 20 minutes. The attack lasted five hours and in the end several dozens were killed and many more injured. This cadet survived by jumping from off the roof of the building before fleeing. Three or four of them came into our dormitory. They just barged in, started firing at point-blank range. We started screaming and running around. Then I ran upstairs. Security agencies say the assault was well coordinated, with the gunmen attacking the police training center from five different points. Authorities say one of the assailants was killed by security forces and two others died detonating their explosive vests. No group has claimed responsibility, but one of the region's top military commanders believes the attack was planned outside the country. He went on to point the finger at an offshoot.
Protests had a clear message for MINUSCA, the UN mission which has 10,000 soldiers and police officers in the country. We ask the UN Security Council to withdraw its peacekeepers from our country. They're doing the opposite of what they were supposed to do here. The UN rejected the accusations and said the National Army was not yet ready to defend its people. Constitutional order only returned this year with the election of Faustin Archange Touadéra. But he is struggling to restore peace across the country, following the civil war that started in 2013 after the toppling of former president François Bozizé. Yesterday, Kurdish Peshmerga forces announced that they had seized the city of Bashika, a strategic city on one of the main roads uh, leading into Mosul. It's only nine kilometers outside the city to the northeast. That completes an arc on this eastern side of the city. It is composed of the city of Karakosh, of Bartela, and now of Bashika. From this arc of cities, the forces are hoping they can give the final push into the actual outskirts of Mosul. We we spoke to a general yesterday in Karakosh. He said he was waiting for reinforcements. He was strengthening his positions in Karakosh before an assault today on Route 80. That is one of the main highways entering the city of Mosul to the southeast. Once that road is conquered, he was telling us that they will be able to give that final push, that final assault on to Mosul itself. He also told me that he would that they would not be waiting for the forces coming up from the south, from Kayara province. Now, it's also important to note that IS have shown that they have still have means to counterattack. They did this in the city of Rudbel, uh, that is to the south of the country in the Ambar province. Uh, they tried to seize control of that city, attacked it on three axes, and also used sleeper cells inside the city. So, indeed, IS, which is obviously on the back foot, but trying to retaliate, which means there will probably be some very, very harsh fighting when the forces try to enter the outskirts of Mosul itself. Night U.S. forces in Iraq are facing stiff resistance from ISIS. American pilots and special forces are helping Iraqi and Kurdish troops in an attempt to retake Iraq's second largest city, Mosul. After a week, the force is 10 miles from Mosul and Holly Williams is with them. The Iraqi military told us they'd liberated the town of Hamdaniya. But we arrive to find the streets still ringing with gunfire. In some places, ISIS has launched surprise attacks, even after Iraqi forces think they're in control. And these troops now shoot at anything that moves. This used to be a Christian town of 50,000 people. But its residents all fled ISIS and now it's shattered and deserted. Lieutenant General Riyad Jalal Taufi insisted that his soldiers were only fighting small pockets of resistance. That, that sounds like quite a lot of resistance, I have to tell you. No, he said, this is the military way. They're just clearing the area. Another nearby Christian town, Bartella, has also been retaken. We were there two years ago, just before ISIS seized the town, meeting the local men who were trying to protect it and visiting the church, where we found them praying in Aramaic, the language spoken by Jesus. This is the same church today, charred and desecrated. In Hamdaniya, these Christian militiamen have come back to help secure their town. One of them is Hussam Salim, who told us he kissed the ground when he returned the night before and vowed to rebuild. Thank God we're back, he told us. Even if I die here now, it doesn't matter. Holly Williams, CBS News. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter visited northern Iraq today. He met with the region's Kurdish leader in Erbil and got an update on the battle for Mosul, where Iraqi troops backed by the U.S. military are trying to retake Iraq's second largest city from ISIS. Holly Williams is following the fight up close. Reporting from the front lines of the fight against ISIS is sometimes chaotic. 
We carried a GoPro camera with us on Friday as we witnessed a gunfight in the city of Kirkuk between ISIS militants and a local SWAT team. You can see our cameraman Abdi Kadani and producer Erin Lyle trying to capture the reality of this conflict without getting themselves hurt. The battle for Mosul pits America and its allies against a sadistic death cult. Airstrikes and helicopter gunships against suicide bombers. On the front line north of Mosul on Thursday, these Kurdish fighters spotted a small drone overhead, causing panic and drawing a hail of bullets. It's not surprising they're nervous. An ISIS drone loaded with explosives killed two Kurdish soldiers here earlier this month. The US military insists that its role here is only to advise and assist the Iraqis. But the line between advising and combat sometimes sees a fine distinction. Members of the US military are operating in this area, although we're not allowed to film them. And we've also seen troops from the coalition, from a European country, firing on ISIS. But even with America's help, this battle against barbaric extremists will come down to these men fighting for their land and control of their country. Holly Williams, CBS News, Northern Iraq. Syrian state media and opposition activists say government forces and their allies have captured a strategic high point in Aleppo. The Sana News Agency says government troops have taken the hilltop of Bazo on the southern edge of the city. Sana says rebels shelled government-held neighborhoods, killing one person and wounding seven. Fighting has flared after a three-day unilateral ceasefire declared by Moscow ended at the weekend. Sixteen civilians, including three children, were killed on Monday in air raids and rocket attacks in the province of Idlib. Activists say seven people, including two women and a child, died in an airstrike on the town of Khan Shekhoun in the south of the region. Seven other people, including four women and four children, are said to have been killed in other attacks.